It goes back to mm-hmm. everything we always say. It's just the guy that does the con- basic work over and over again. That's right. That's key. Uh, and he's also on peptides. He's over at uh, Titan Medical. Oh, nice. So we're helping yeah. get there. I like it. He does the EAAs. He does the Hercules Potion. He probably nice. does some of the uh, – uh, uh, oh, I'm going to blow the name. When you want to blow it back. PT-141. Yeah, the PT-141. Look at this. Uh, look at that. That's good. That's good, man. It looks good, dude. It looks really good. Right? Right. I look good, yeah. It's like man. Bobo How times he? 10. He's in early 30s. Early 30s? Early 30s? Lukey, how old are you? Uh, but he's one of those guys that really just stays consistent, stays with it. And what's cool is that uh, he hooked up with this hottie, and now they train together. And it's cool, and I, I still want to talk about this, the circle of people you put around you. Yes. You know, he's not just out there dating a girl he met. And it's, okay, but he met somebody that, that incorporated in the health and fitness and incorporated the eating healthy. And that's a, that's a better relationship. That's the only way. That's the only way I ever worked. I it's never dated a girl. That, I, I mean, we can talk about your young days if 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 the miss is not around. Obviously, we 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 had fun, but a lot of that fun was with ones that we didn't date for a long period of time. But I never dated a girl for a long period of time that didn't exercise, that didn't try to uh, prep meals and stuff like that. Did you ever do the twenty-year-old party girl? Didn't didn't work out all that. I, I, me personally, or him? No, you. Forget me. Luke. He's done. He, he's done. No, this, he's going to marry no, this one. He's so, over with. <laughs> you know what, man? I mean, to be honest with you, I've never dated a woman or a girl that's ever prepped meals or worked out continuously. So the opposite. It's it's just something I, I never thought was like a big thing. Like, I mean, I didn't really get into like. I mean, I was I was working out myself as an athlete and stuff like that, right? And I would always look at the the magazines and stuff like that. But I never found a component or a, a partner that would do that. He was Sharice. Like I've helped her get a lot healthier for sure. And she doesn't restrict me on my workouts, but I've seen, you know, with some of my friends that they get in a relationship with somebody and they're not exercising. Right. And at that point, then they start like giving them flack for, going to want to exercise or going to the gym or doing whatever they need to do. And at that point, like that person is actually holding you back or doing you harm by doing this. It's a selfish thing. It is. And I know some women will say, well, he works all day and then he goes to the gym for an hour or two and then he comes home and he eats and he goes to sleep. Well, I mean, I'm, you know, this is something that, you know, when you start wanting to have a relationship with somebody, you usually have common things that bring you together. You guys, you know, all right, cool. And there's it's different not just how hot she is. She got a banging butt. Yeah. I mean, you know, the butt, top, bottom, TNA, it's what it's all about, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, seriously, great. like, yeah, at that point, like, you know, if you don't have somebody doing that, it's, it's harder to, to stay on track. And uh, it's a lot easier to stay on track when you have somebody that's supporting those goals like that. Now, Sharice was never like, oh, don't do this, you know, when we first got there, you know, eat more, you know, do this. So she was trying to help me, but I, I would I would like her to do it. And she's got on her little kick now of Pilates and all that, what she's doing by herself. So that's fine with me. Do it, whatever you want to do, but you got to exercise. You got to have some activity um, because it's just no good if you don't, man. The body is not made to... Just sit around all day. It's not. It's made to move. You gotta I, I, I see a lot more of this um, in the martial arts world. The the martial the guys that because uh, they go to work, you know, then they're done with work at five or six, and then they come over and then they roll for a couple hours, and then I hear about uh, uh, I haven't eaten, you know, um, or my girl's yelling at me because I'm spending too much time rolling. Uh, and so it's like, oh, it, and the reason I'm saying this guys for you out there is a a life lesson, I guess you would say. And that is, uh, choose, choose not just for the hotness of the woman, but, but, but like Johnny said, it's like at least someone that doesn't shut you down from being that 
person that goes to the gym. This is for you girls as well. If you guys like the gym and the guy doesn't and, and, and you want to eat healthy, I, I recommend making sure that the, the, the significant other has somewhat of, of the same interest or at least allows you to do that and doesn't bug you on that. Support you. Yeah. If they yeah. support you, that's great. That, that's what it's all about. It's all about support, whether they like it or not. That's where the unconditional love comes into play. You know, they love you. They'll, they'll support you and they'll follow you all the way through the journey, no matter if they like it or not. You know, and at that point, like, you know, you could motivate them to want to do better. And that's really what it is. I mean, you motivate your partner. They motivate you. When you're down, they pick you up. When you're, you know, when they're down, you pick them up. So, I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a, a big thing. But I think, you know, obviously activity and and. And for relationship, I think it's a lot easier. And uh, like I said, first thing, when I told Sharice when we started getting serious, because back then I would just, I would get up, I'd work all day, I'd go to the gym, come home, eat, and then sleep. If I had a girlfriend at the time, I'd hang out with her. But I told her, like, when we started getting serious and we started having kid talks and all this, I don't care about anything else. I'll sacrifice everything else. But I got to get at least an hour in the gym almost every day. You know, that was the big thing for me. It's it's more of, it's not just building muscle or going to the gym. It's literally a mental stress break for me. It helps relieve stress. Um, so, and then all the health benefits that come along with activity too, like that. So it's a major thing. It's, it should be a priority for people. So for you guys out there, um, I did date people that worked out and dieted. John did not. Both made it through. No problem. Kept our physiques still uh had still stayed on track and i think uh rel uh, outside of me because the people always trained and, and did their nutrition uh johnny because he stayed on track motivates the other half to start and that's a cool thing in in all aspects and I know that Mona kind of uh, is trying to motivate me to do more stuff around the house and all that. And yeah, it's not going to work, but still, <laughs> it needs to be trying, right? So, you know, it's the attempt of, of trying to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, for, for your partner, for, for relationships, sometimes you like, you know, whatever they're interested in. Like, you know, if it's your kid, sometimes it's video games. You might like to play video games, but you do it because you want to spend some time with the kid and you have some things to do together. But, you know, it's just it's simple things like that. If, you know, if they, they try to at least go there or attempt to be around you or be there with you, that's not a good thing. But like I said, if they tell you no, 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 like, or like people, like they, they shame people that prep their meals. I mean, I've seen this more lately than not. And it's just really weird that somebody would do that. Like, oh, like you can't, like you, you have to eat clean, like every single meal or you, you can't walk around. With, like now it, it's been really crazy, Mike, since we got back from Olympia. Like I've been so consistent with meals, training, like I literally been carrying my cooler and I've been getting on point. So it's been a good thing for me. But people are asking me now, like, why the hell are you bringing your cooler everywhere? And I got it with me, like literally wherever I'm going, because I got water in there. I have my protein drinks there. I got food in there if I need it. I, I've been eating my fruit. I mean, it's been, it's, it's been on point. So yeah, don't let anybody shame you because you're trying to do better for yourself in any way, shape or form of life. Before this question for you, Johnny, uh, that's I think that's one thing I saw. The, the 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 social media has become a high school kind of thing. Like somebody just said, "Hey, is using straps and doing sumo deadlifts cheating?" It's like it's like this. Is a, it's a it's a high school mentality. If you need to use straps to lift the weights, I'm fine. Sumos are a great exercise. In no world is it cheating. It's just a different exercise. Right. But the concept of them going, Johnny, why do you prep all your meals? Why do you do all that? It's such a high school mentality. Right. Um, it really is. And I think we it saw is. a lot of that with the, with the politics. People going on there and bantering and arguing. It's like, hey, great job, guys. Way to, way to go online and argue with somebody about politics that you don't even know. There's some quality time spent well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot, a lot of uh, uneducated people out there doing dumb things that's for sure yeah uh, all right um so what is the best way to break in the fitness industry and make money what's the best way to break in the fitness industry i guess make some cool content that gets out there something that's something niche something you're good at something that like people like and at that point if you do it real well and you have passion for it 
you can usually monetize on it. So, you know, whatever it is, I mean, if it's you want to work out or you're giving fitness tips or you have something, you have to have something that people want, something you bring value of or that people feel interested in. Right. Because some people don't bring any value. They just bring the dumbest crap out and it just it sticks. People just want to watch dumb stuff sometimes. That's how reality television is kind of that way, too, sometimes. So, um, yeah. That's that's the way I would say to break in the fitness industry. I mean, I would probably try to collab with somebody that is somebody in the fitness industry or do your own work. And like I said, find your niche and at that point, start monetizing on it. I mean, that's the best way. I mean, for me, but Mike's been in the game a lot longer than me as far as that goes. So he could probably give you a lot better tips than me. I think it's so in my day, I had to win competitions. I had to uh, be the best in my field in powerlifting or in bodybuilding. So it helped. And then I was unique in a sense to where I could do something most couldn't. Uh, and so that helped me get into the industry. But it was me competing that, that set me there. I don't think you have to compete anymore. I think it is character and your personality. Uh, you'll go through pages and, and, and some people hit because of the personality. Um, and so I would just stay true to who you are. And uh, just like Johnny said, the magazine now is your social media page. So put out content. Um, be honest about the content in the sense of training and stuff. If you, um, and um, let the personality show. So I, the one thing I wouldn't do is probably the continuous uh, workout every exercise. You know, every post is an exercise. It's just... Mona's going through my page right now and doing a, a complete unfollow on, on so many pages. It's like, I don't need to follow a personal trainer if this isn't our way to connect and stuff. So just be you, be, uh, be entertaining, be funny. I've seen so many kids that aren't in California anymore. They're just all over the United States or over the world that just are fun to watch and, and they're having fun training and their personalities. Yeah. Like David Lade, man, is 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 so big, and he's such a young young, strapping kid, um, but he's got a great personality. So it's not always about the lifting. Right. Be in shape. It definitely, you look like you're in shape. I mean, like back in the day, like you know, when I used to watch people, I mean, that's how those guys got the big contracts and everything like that. They were professional competitors, and at that point, they were winning competitions, and they were on the magazine covers just like yourself. And at that point, that's kind of how people broke out because there was no internet. There was no social media. There wasn't anything like that. I mean, today, I think it's a lot easier, obviously, and people have an advantage because yeah. you don't have to be anybody and you can just throw your stuff out there. You can tag pretty much anybody you want to on social media. So if you really want to try to get in front of somebody's face, you most likely can to a certain degree. Um, so, I mean, I think it's easier than ever for people to monetize on content and that will break them into the fitness industry. And like you said, don't be a one way, one street way, I guess at that point, like if you just do training videos over and over and over, it might get old to somebody. It's really about showing like a little bit of who you are and being organic about it too. I believe unless you put on personality, some people do it like that, but I like being organic. I think it shows who you are. And I think people relate more to being organic than not. All right. Big Johnny, go with it. What's the best supplement besides tests to help a 46-year-old male gain muscle while tall, lanky frame? With a tall, lanky frame, excuse me. All right. So if you're on testosterone, great. You have everything optimized. Everything's balanced. Now, what else can help you gain this lean muscle you want when you're tall and lanky, right? So we want to start looking at some different things. One, we want to make sure your calorie intake is going to be there. You know, I just had this talk with an employee that asked me, like, hey, listen, I want to start gaining some muscle. What can I take? I'm already taking the Hercules on it. So I, I said, I'm like, listen, you got to start increasing your calorie count. One thing. That's one. Two, what supplement, though? So two things would pop into my mind for somebody to possibly use to really gain some muscle. One is MK677. I would utilize this to increase calorie count, increase IGF-1 levels, increase strength, so you can build more lean quality mass, right? Especially if you're on a tall, lanky frame, that means you don't have a lot of weight on you. So at this point, this will help you get there to that degree. 
The other one that I would possibly look at or even possibly combine it with is Tessa Morellen. That's the other one that I would use because raising the IGF-1 levels are going to help build lean mass. And as you get older, it's a little bit harder to do this, okay? So when we talk about this, we need to really start throwing some, some, some big guns at it, per se. Maybe even IGF-1, you can go that route. And could, IGF you do, one, you can, you, could you do the test Morellin with the MK? You could. The only reason I would do they that. work differently, okay, don't there's they? A, there's a rhyme to reason on this. They, they, so the reason I would do it is, is because, one, we're going to increase that IGF-1 level to max level we possibly can. So that's going to help with recovery and all these other good things that go along with it and growing and, and creating more lean mass. The other thing is, is that we're going to increase the hunger. So we want him to eat more calories. So we got to increase that hunger. So that's why I would say with this one, yes, this one will be a good one. If you ask me, could I, should I do CJC, Ipro, and, and Tessamorellin? I would say probably not. I, I'd say, you know what? I don't really see a lot more coming out of this. But MK and Tessamorellin or MK and CJC or something like that, I see some some benefit for that. Because, like I said, when you start stimulating, even the hexarellin, that'd be another one. And that's one of the new therapies. And at that point, you could you do hexarellin and MK. It, you know, it'd be a little bit more inexpensive than the testimorellin would. But, you know, with testimorellin, it hits adipose tissue. I like that. That's one thing that I like about it. Not just raising IGF-1 levels, which is great benefit just by itself, but actually, you know, having that adipose tissue getting attacked too as well. I mean, that's just a benefit health-wise all the way around. Would you do this for 12 weeks? And then yes. uh, retest your blood work at that time, and then yeah. maybe change the protocol. So yeah, so or, I would or do have it, the I discussion would... with your 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 provider at that time. No, so I, what I would do is I would do like it just depends what what kind of way we're gonna go here. So if we're gonna go a stacked way, I guess we would go probably ninety days with MK, and then at that point we can continue on with test rolling. Just depends on how things are going too, right? If we want to check in every 28 days, make sure you're all right. How are we doing? Are we moving along here? And then at that point, after the 90, assess and say, all right, we're moving in a great direction. We're going to have to get off the MK. What can we do to hopefully just generate and, and, and recover and, and hit the place of this? So at that point, I would probably do an IGF-1 thing, you know, as far as that goes. I'd do an IGF-1 for another 60 days. And at that point, if you want to go back to the MK, if we need to start, you know, gaining some more weight still, then we can start going back on that. Every couple of months, it would just cycle off the MK and go back on it. All right. So going off of this guy right here, he's 46 and tall and lanky, like he says. So there's a chance that he could do the MK with the test morellin for 90 days and then recheck in with Titan Medical at that point and try to put on that great – uh, bump up that IGF to where he's putting on some good size, some good strength, and helping his hunger. Right, right, and he should see some. I mean, you should see some pretty good result within ninety days. I mean, just on just on MK alone, I think you know, in ninety days, you know, you you'd start seeing a good result in, in strength and starting to put on some some quality weight. You know, not not a whole bunch of, unless unless you eat a whole bunch of garbage. Now, if you go to McDonald's three meals a day and you're hitting like two quarter pounders and two fries we might put on some bad weight there you know yeah. well, we don't want that we want to make sure that we're putting on quality lean mass and weight and at that point that would take you eating well to do that clean per se what, what about tessamorellin and aod any benefits doing, yep. that? doing that i would do it for weight loss you could do that too all right so mean? he you're talking about before we go too far down the road here um I want you to explain to everybody the difference between tesmorellin, and I think you were doing that at night correctly, and then yeah. uh, AOD yeah. would be in the morning or or twice a day from from yeah. some discussions. Please explain yeah. both, and what's the difference sure. between them? Sure, sure, sure. So um, AOD is the sequence of growth hormone that just conducts weight loss, lipolysis and lipogenesis. They're destroying a fat and then not storing fat, basically. So that's what it's going to do. It's going to help with just weight loss. There's going to be no IGF-1 bump. There's going to be no growth factor. There's not going to be no anti-aging effect. It's going to be purely weight loss driven. Okay. Now, when we have that, 
that's going to just hit weight loss. Now, if we hit tesamorelin, then tesamorelin is a GHRH peptide, so it's going to bump your natural growth hormone to raise your IGF-1 levels, okay? So we got that working. So now the growth effect, the anti-aging effect, all that is there. So now we have that, and we have the weight loss effect as far as attacking the adipose tissue. So in terms, you're talking about expediting fat loss and weight loss as a, a pure result with both of these combined. And we're talking about, like I said, raising IGF-1 levels. So if you're training in the gym, you're going to recover faster. You should be getting stronger. I mean, this should, should all be one effect, anti-aging effect all the way around. Sleep patterns should be better. Like skin should be better. Like this should definitely, you know, turn things around for you a little bit. If I'm correct on this, you use, you use the term weight loss. For these guys out there, uh, is is weight loss with AOD fat loss? It attacks the fat, fat correct? Okay. Fat loss. Right. It, when just I talk about guys, all these, I should probably I should probably say it should be fat loss. Yeah. You know, I just want to I want to make sure I've got that right, and I wanted them to understand that it's not. It's for not, sure. For sure. If you're hearing weight loss, I always think of that skinny fat person. You know, oh, I'm just, I dropped 10 pounds. Okay, but you don't look any better. You're just dropping right. full body weight where AOD right. actually attacks the fat guys. Right. You guys are all talking about right. that. You know, a lot of you message me and say, hey, how do I get rid of this last bit around my waistline, my lower yep. back? Yeah. What John is talking about right here. Yep. This attacks That's definitely that. it. The I mean, especially AOD. around the stomach area, you know, That's the most that. common area. For both males and females, this is the most common area for adipose tissue. And adipose tissue, if you guys don't know what that is, that's really bad fat that surrounds your organs. That's like really unhealthy. We don't want this. And it accumulates over time. So at that point, like it just keeps getting thicker and thicker and thicker. And that's how you keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So how do we really attack it? Now, weight loss comes throughout the whole body. There's not one area where we just say, you know what? I just want to lose weight in my arms or I just want to get abs. So I'm just going to do crunches. It doesn't work like that, right? Generally. Now, with Tessa Morellin, no, it doesn't work that start, way. But... It doesn't work that way, right? Yeah. But with Tessa Morellin, we can attack the adipose tissue directly in the stomach area. So that's the really cool thing that I really like about it. And I always bring it up and I always talk about it because there's nothing else that really does that. So when we can attack the whole body with weight loss and then we can attack the adipose tissue directly, I mean, you're getting major, major benefits from these two things. And then we add in the IGF-1. So let's say you gave it an 80% shot of what you're doing as far as, you know, intensity and being with it, you probably get some good results at 80%. Now, if you gave it 100% effort, you probably get some really, really, really good results. So it's kind of up to you as the driver. I could give you the fastest car that ships the best and is the best on the market, but it really does come down to the driver driving that car, how good that car does that lap, right? Like can, he can drive that car. It really depends. So, you know, it's all what you do with it or the tools that we give you, right? And it can be a really good carpenter, a really bad one. It really depends on how much you want to put into it. So, uh, you know, it's, it's up to you to, to take that stance and to be the architect of your own body. But you only have one time and shot to do this in life. So at that point, it's not ever too late. I mean, I hate to say that. I mean, if you're 80 years old and you're on your deathbed, but you know, if you're 30 or 40 years old and you've been overweight your whole life, it's not too late. It's definitely not. I've seen people turn around like crazy. And I never thought that because I've never generally myself been obese. So I never came from that that state. I don't know what that mindset is. Like, man, I'm obese, I'm fat. Some people call me the fat guy my whole life or whatever it is. I've never been there. So I can't step into that. Have I lost my way a little bit and gained some weight I didn't like, you know, previously before Titan? Yeah. Did I fix it? Hell yeah. But at that point, like, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I think people want that more than ever if they are overweight for sure. You said 80. Um, and we were... I didn't watch the movie, but Demi Moore is in a new movie. 
And I think it's the Substance. one that you recommended. You. So you recommended it. Jeff I said it was so pinnacle of divinity. They got the idea off of divinity, oh, off my movie. Uh, and Steven Soderbergh, I was like, I love it. Bypass all that. When I was growing up and people would talk about retirement um, and, and senior citizens, you know, it was 65. And that's, 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 oh my gosh, that's old. That is ancient, even 40s old. Uh, in today's society, we get people going, hey, I'm 30. Can I, can I still put muscle on? I'm 35. I, can I still do this? I would like all of you today to go out and look at Demi Moore, who is 62, almost 63 years old. And I'll tell you right now, phenomenal, phenomenal. She's almost a 65 year old, you know, and she is beyond, beyond. So here we go again, that society thinks what is possible. And here's Demi Moore showing what is possible. Now let's, oh, oh well, that's one person out of, let's talk about that whole circle of people. Rob Lowe, 61 years old. Look at what he looks like. Look at these people. Rob Lowe could take your girl, everybody. Hi. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean though? It's like, I they're, do. They're, they're going to do this and Seriously. they're going to do this. And it goes back to this, that, that stupid saying about the four minute mile. You can't do it. Your heart will explode, you know? And then suddenly the first person does it. And then it's just a, 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 a domino effect of others break beating that record. And so for all of you that are on here today, John is just giving you MK. You want to put some extra muscle on, get that hunger going. Somebody asked about a bulking. How do you get more hungry? These are some questions I've gotten so much of. Sorry about wrapping on here, Johnny. But oh, I love it, dude. You're giving love golden it. tickets. This is golden tickets. You, you guys talk about, I want to be more hungry. I'm, I'm, I'm sluggish yeah. now that I'm eating this. MK. Okay, let's yeah. talk about that little bit of body fat around the waistline. Well, you got AOD and Tessa Moreland, two things that are working differently at the same time. Holy right. cow. And right. again, it's uh, it's available for you guys right now, and the number's right there to you. But, yeah, it's time to start looking at these individuals that are out there and breaking it open, going, hey, you can really not just – I mean, Demi Moore's not just being active and whatever at 60, almost right. – closing. she's closing in on 65. I know people hate when you say – she's 62. Guess what? Before you know it, she's going to be 65, and she's going to look so much like she does right now. Of course. You know. You got Brad Pitt, who's again can take your girl, sixty years old, and these, these people yep. are just showing you what is available now to society and life. Absolutely. Um, so, and I don't Amazing. know if these people do peptides. I don't know what they do, and I know somebody out there will say, "Well, they do this, this, and this." Well, you know, they're the Listen, kind of I'm individual. Sure, I'm sure there's people out there. They're going to say, "Well, they have unlimited funds, so oh, they can get all right. the procedures, that's and they get right. all this stuff." So let me give you my example, right? Now, I don't know. I mean, I've seen some, some pretty phenomenal women in the fitness industry at 70 years old. Um, I mean, you know, it's hard to say with actresses, but I've met some people personally in like 68, 69 years old who looked like they were in their 40s. I mean, as females. So at that point, like, I, I think it's about really taking care of yourself. I think, you know, obviously genetics come into a play to a certain extent. But somebody with really good genetics, you can't just, you can't chalk up genetics. You can't go. I'm not going to do it. Why? I don't got the genetics. You don't know if you got the genetics. Yeah, no, it, it's not. So it's not going to chalk that. it up to That's that. Help out. Yeah, it's not a scapegoat. Definitely not a scapegoat. Because somebody with great genetics, they can destroy themselves. I've seen people with great genetics destroy themselves, and they look worse than somebody that had bad genetics. So that, there's not a conversation there. But there's definitely a conversation with somebody that takes care of themselves or somebody that abuses themselves. Sixty six. Okay, I. Look at this. Can you pull up a photo of her? I, Demi Moore? I, I did a TV show. No, I did a TV show oh. with someone that's older than Demi Moore, who in person, phenomenal, phenomenal. Right. And again, right. if, if you asked how old, I don't know if you can pull up, but uh, Angela, I did a, a, a TV show. Angela Bassett is the lead of. Oh, and she's dude, 66 she's in years great old. great shape. But she's like, you, you meet her and you go, okay, that's... Here's something, because everybody on here, when, when I believe lotion is good for your waistline, and there's like, 
Oh, but you didn't have lotion back in the day. Well, no, I had other lotion back in the day. And now we got the Titan medical lotion. And it's like, so you keep doing it. But just basic lotion is a good step to keep the moisture in the skin. And so you have better texture. Again, it's such a simple thing. And people only want I'm fat today. Tomorrow I want to be ripped. Right. That instant gratification. <laughs> so again, I wish it was that easy. Everybody be doing it. That's a, that's my common saying to Shree. So anything like, like oh, it's tight. Oh, it's hurt. You know what? If it was that easy, everybody be doing it. It's something that, like do. we talk about. You can't fake it to make it. You got to do the right things. You got to be consistent, and it will show. If you're not, it's gonna show. Yeah. So I mean, pull it up. You know. Oh yeah. yeah Listen, yeah. Angela Bassett, dude. It's, she's. Ben, I mean, her guns, man, like in Tina Turner in that movie. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen that? I mean, she, dude, she's a man. A buddy of mine, David, trained her for that movie. That's 66, everybody. Yeah, God bless her. Beyond. 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 Yeah. And then again, Demi Moore, fit 62. And what? Remember in the morning, he got up, he did his LED. What is like three packs? Which guy? The actor in the show. Oh my God, <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah. New show for you. Yeah. Another one of these yeah. Tristan shows. The yeah, uh, Landman. Yeah. There's the land. Best. Billy Bob Daddy. Thornton's got a great one. But I love how they started the episode. Uh, it showed him getting up in the bathroom. He did his NAD. He did his B12, yeah. and he did his testosterone. Yeah. He shot all three of them. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh and I was sitting there going. Yes, I, I love the writer and, and, and producer of those shows. Um, That's yeah. awesome. But it's just, again, I'm glad they're letting it become mainstream and, yeah. and, and going NAD helps. Talk to us about NAD. Uh, obviously, really I, I don't know how Bobby, how old is Bobby? Uh, Billy, Bob? Billy Bob, who I freaking He's love. He's got to be in his 60s too. 69. 69? Oh. Yeah. What a sick he was! Dude. He was! He was like his late fifties when he was dating Angel Jolie. Remember that? He's a freaking savage! <laughs> Remember, I like the way you talk. Um, <laughs> but again, okay. Tell me about NAD and why is this the Hollywood buzz for all the celebrities that are doing this? Yeah. So NAD is a uh, an awesome therapy and so many health benefits. There's no downside to NAD. So. Anybody that's out there, that's one I would definitely incorporate with my regimen. And why would I incorporate that regimen? Well, one, it's a coenzyme. It's in every living cell in the body. It helps produce ATP, and ATP is energy throughout the body and pushed through, through the cells. But what does it really do and how does it really help you? One, it protects your DNA. So DNA can be damaged. be damaged by all kinds of different things. So we don't want this. We want to protect our DNA to make sure it's good from oxidative stress, um, from different things in the environment that could be damaging us on the inside. Two, it's going to help with mental clarity and it protects from neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's or dementia. So at that point, it helps repair cells at the cellular level. So at that point, what happens is our body, as it goes along, cells get damaged and they try to repair themselves and they never repair themselves back to where they originally were at. With NAD, it actually helps repair those cells. So there's so many different great benefits you're going to get with NAD just for longevity purposes, anti-aging purposes, for mind and mental clarity, enhancement and protective uh, components. And then at that point, we talk about protecting our DNA. That is a major, major one. Um, so this is why everybody's taking it in Hollywood. One, it makes you sharper. Two, it's going to help with anti-aging and repair of your body. So at that point, you won't age as fast. I guess that will help minimize the biological decline. aging. So that's why they're all taking it, you know. And I've been talking about NAD. God, man, I'll, it's got to be nine years. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I can I I so understand that. We I was just talking, she was talking about uh, – um, these actors and stuff talking about that. And I, I go back to Phil. He's talking about it. Is it uh, learning the lines, remembering all that kind of stuff, going on to the stage to do your, you know, lecture or whatever it is. You've got to be so on point. Yeah. 
And yeah. so again, this is one of the early ones that I heard about. Yeah, NAD is a really good one. Like I said, that that's a big one. I've been talking about it for I, I think eight or nine years. Even when we started compounding and give it to our patients a long time ago, like eight or nine years ago, um, they tried to come in and shut it down because of that, because they didn't want NAD hitting the market. So it's just crazy how that's came. And uh, we started pushing it real hard. And then it started picking up commercially, I think about maybe about four or five years ago. And then it started getting pushed real hard with, with IVs. But like I said, IVs are great to take it, but I would take it like an intermuscular shot with a little insulin needle and you could do it daily or you know, every other day or, you know, whenever you need it, basically. And at that point, you don't have to go sit for two hours and get an IV and get stuck like that. You can go about your day. So you get up in the morning, let's say you have a, let's say you have an event you have to go to and you have to give a major speech there. Then at that point, you can go and you take your injection, you're ready to rock and roll for that speech and you're on your way. And there's nothing in, you know, in between you and that. You'll be laser focused. That's one thing I love about it. It's a natural energy and it's it's just like i said we used to call it our limitless therapy because that's the best thing i can describe it as it's not going to make you learn foreign languages in two days or whatever happened in the movie with bradley cooper but it was the thing that you can feel it if you take the right dose you can feel it engage right your body engages with it and at that point kick in and then you're on your way and on, on, on the way to rock and roll whatever you're trying to do i love it i've love used it. it been a big proponent with me for sure you do a lot of lectures and talks and stuff like that and interaction. So you got to be on 24 seven on point for sure. Here's another one for you. And, and you got some great ones sure. on this. Um, sure. So and I talked they, about this earlier, this, the sore elbows and, and using the straps. That's why I recommend if you can, I get your hand strength to coincide with your your arm strength to coincide with your deadlifts and stuff like that um it's my recommendation but if you do get elbow stuff johnny johnny's got the uh yeah and again so, the wolverine protocol yeah that's what they call it they call it the wolverine protocol uh now sore elbows any joint areas let's say shoulders knees whatever ligaments tendons muscles i mean at that point we really want to talk about bpc 157 tba 500 which are healing peptides and the way these healing peptides really work, the main component is, is creating new blood vessels to bring new blood to these areas and take out inflammation in the body too that way. So at that point, that's what it's really good for. Now, it can be used as a preventative, or if you have this acute or chronic pain, it can be used for that too as well. Usually it's between, you know, maybe a six to 12 week protocol, depending on what the injury is, what you're trying to achieve as far as that goes. But you'll notice a big difference right away. Um, that's one thing that's helped me. It's helped so many other patients and in different injuries. I, I mean, so many, I can, I couldn't even name them all. So, I mean, wrist, toes, I mean, knees, uh, even if you were to have like, um, like you were to have a, a scrape per se, or, or road, road rash from motorcycle accident, cause that's what happened with some of these patients and, and actually applying it topically to those areas too, as well, can, can really help. Uh, wound healing too. Aloha. I was 468, now under 300. How long can you take BPC 157 safely and GH? I take three units of each a day. Any supplement you like for tendon and muscle recovery? So when we talk about this, that's awesome. You've lost that much weight. 168 pounds is a lot of weight to use or to lose, excuse me. Using BPC-157, you can use it continuously. So if there's not some time limit or cycling on and off with BPC-157. Now, growth hormone, you know, as far as that goes, listen, you can take it. I, I don't know what, what your numbers are IGF-1-wise. You know, I mean, there's people that take it forever. So that can be taken forever. But I recommend that. That's not up to me. That's up to your provider. BBC 157, you can take forever. And at that point, you know, three units, that's when my question comes into play. Because when I talk about three units, I'm like, is that 30 units you're really talking about? Because three units, would, I mean, you couldn't even, I, I couldn't even put that there on, a, on an insulin needle. So at that point, I'm thinking it's 30, but what's the medication dosage that you're getting in the 30 units? That's the real question. Because the way you dilute, 
the medication is the dosage you're going to get from the medication when you pull it to a certain number. So, I mean, I think that's what really counts. But, you know, you don't want to overdo it on growth hormone. And uh, BBC 157, there's nothing bad that's going to happen to you if you do overdo it. All right. What is the best form of B12? So there's different forms of B12. But when I say that, there's a methylate, there's a sinocobalin, there's a hexacobalin. So what's the best one? Methylate is considered the best B12 version. Methylate is supposed to be more bioavailable to the body. Now, what I've seen, because I've seen all of these B12s and I've seen patients take them and, and see the result on blood testing. And what I've seen in blood testing is, is if you took cytokobalamin or you took methylcobalamin, you usually came back over range or at an optimal healthy level. There was nobody that took one shot of each or, or other and at that point came back lower or higher. It was just is what it is. Shut up. All you, Johnny. All right. Weightlifting for Kyle Cushing. Low reps, heavy weights, lifted fast superset with plyos. Um, I don't know on this one. This is this is too it's much. A, it's a it's martial arts. Too much for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I would be strong, and yeah, the, the supersets and and the uh, plyo is great, great thing for you. Athletics, right? Athletics. Yeah. It's all about being athletic for sure. All right. What fat burners? So fat burners, we have fat burners at Titan Medical Center. We have our ECA stack, ephedrine, caffeine, B12, chromium, so and a little aspirin that's in there too as well. If you're allergic to aspirin, we can take that out. But we talk about real ephedrine, real ephedrine HCL. So when we talk about that, it's one of the best ones out there that you can use for Fat burning, energy, mental clarity. And then we talk about caffeine, which is another big one. And you combine these two for thermogenesis in the body. And at that point, adding in B12 and chromium to, you know, basically mobilize more fat loss. And at that point, increase more energy in the body too as well. So these are some really, really good things. We have different doses for different people too because stimulants and fat burners, you know, some people – they went to GNC or big box stores per se. They get a fat burner over the counter. Now they have jitters, heart palpitations. It's not going to be like that. It should be a nice, clean energy. It should be able to get you through and not have heart palpitations or feeling like a ping pong ball going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm sure we've all been there with pre-workouts or some sort of stimulant in our life. All right. True. Any advice? on what to take for Charlie horses, getting them in hands, feet, and hamstrings. I'm drinking electrolytes, magnesium, potassium now. Well, that's, I mean, that's really what I would say is potassium, electrolytes. Um, it's a good thing. So Mary, um, how long has this been going on for? Charlie horses, hands, feet. So it feels like you're just cramping and can't let up as far as that goes. Because yeah, man, that's... Like you're what about i feel like you're getting ready for like a bodybuilding competition and yep. you're at that stage where you're cramping like a lot um would hercules potion or anything like that be something to consider so i know a lot of bodybuilders that get really really i would definitely up. look at some something that has taurine in it too as well that would help with some cramping i would think and then obviously the electrolytes magnesium potassium i mean these are things that you know but depending on what you're doing like you know i, I mean I could see somebody in a bodybuilding competition getting it like that, but like somebody that's on a normal day that, you know, that's not really like cutting that, cutting back on all these different things. So, you know, with this, I would try to maybe in, introduce some taurine in there. Maybe that's for the cramping, but how much are you doing electrolytes, magnesium, potassium? Maybe you need to up that just a little bit. I'm trying to think of what a Charlie horse is. I always think of a Charlie horse like he's when you get yeah you get hit and then someone punching the thigh. Yeah, say, oh. that's that's kind of what I would think of. That's why I said the cramping. Like I used to get it before, where like my hand would be like oh my oh or my feet. Right. I'd be laying in bed and like oh I got this bad cramp. It was like oh but. Mary, let you know, us know what the difference between a, a Charlie horse and a cramp is. Yeah. I give yeah. I give Titan a Charlie horse every time he comes home from school. 
<laughs> or a knuckle sandwich, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, knuckle sandwich. Uh, all right. Mikey Joe said, should you train sick? How to preserve muscle during illness recovery? So personally, I wouldn't go train sick, you know, just depending on what it is, because I don't want to get anybody else sick. I don't want to wear down the body anymore. I want to get that immune system back fortified and strong. That doesn't mean you can't do activity. I just wouldn't go to the gym. I'd probably do something at home, maybe do some, some exercise <laughs> if I could, maybe some push-ups, sit-ups, stuff like that where I'm keeping it there. Now, if you're feeling really ill or you're burning up, you want to make sure that you're breaking the temperature per se and make sure you're recovering because at that point, that's the biggest thing, I think, is making sure you can get your your hunger back if you lose it because some people, like I know when I've got sick sometimes, you, you lose your appetite and you want to make sure you're eating because if you're not getting enough protein in the body, you might be you know, going through muscle and you don't want that. So I think if you recover, if you recover properly while you're sick, if you're getting enough fluids and you're eating enough foods, I don't think you're going to lose that much muscle. So I don't think it's a big deal. I don't, I think if obviously, listen, you go train, you don't have an appetite, you don't eat anything, right? Like for half the day, you're not getting your water or anything like that. I think you're doing more damage than good at that point. Just my personal opinion. That's how I've done it. I've tried to train when I've been sick. I don't think it's a good thing. Depending on what the sickness is, I guess, right? Like, I don't know, maybe it's a little head cold, but even then I, I kind of just, just sit back for a day just to try to get my body a little bit more like, you know, built up. And at that point, maybe I'll see how I am the next day, but that's me. What about you, Mike? What do you do? You're sick. You'll be fine in a day. That's what I'm <laughs> Sorry. 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 Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Tips for maintaining long hair. Well, Mike would probably be better at this than me. I, I will say this: beautiful locks. Uh, for the last year, I've done a combination of three. I do the Titan protocol of the um, the shot, the tablet, yep. and the yep. cream. Uh, so we're talking the about the injectable Sorry. biotin, yep. the hair health capsules, and the hair foam, Titan hair foam. Those are the three. If you want to maintain long, healthy hair, you want to keep the hair that you have. <laughs> Don't drop <laughs> me. Yeah, do the three. Um, and then also uh, another one is don't cut your hair. True. Get long hair. Yeah, sorry. True. True. Keep your hair long. You're golden. You'll love it. But yeah, the thickness, the thickness of the hair and the healthiness of the hair. Yeah. So a, a you know, side note, uh, uh, big show. Paul, Paul White was out here yeah. and he goes, uh, uh, your hair's like 10 times better. And I go, Oh, okay. He goes, yeah. Last time you looked like a scarecrow when I saw you. Now it's now it's healthy looking. <laughs> I was like, thanks a lot. Yeah, I, I I like it. You know, I'm okay with that. But coming from somebody that's on TV and always there yeah. and has been, so it's, yeah. I loved hearing that. It's like, so it's one of those things that Jeff and I were talking about earlier. Is is you don't see it instantly, but it's cool how those things sneak up on you, and it's yep. like, wow. Yep. All right. Yeah. So, and you might not even notice it as much because you see yourself every day. It's other people when they see you and they haven't seen you in a while. I'm like, hey, man, oh my god, like you lost weight or you know, what would you do? Like, good man, like, you, know, you hear all the time. That's a good thing too. It's that's that, that's a good thing to hear for sure. Yeah, yeah. The scarecrow part was the the good one. That's funny <laughs> as hell, dude. Yeah, come on, that's funny. I could visualize that as soon as he says, "says well played, sir, well played." <laughs> Oh, shit. All right. What do you suggest to someone who's 24 and trying to build discipline? Be consistent. Wow. Wow. Go. How are you trying to build discipline? You, you got to do the right thing over and over and over in everything you're doing. You got to be accountable. Hold yourself accountable. I think that's the biggest thing for building disciplines. Like you got to hold yourself accountable and you got to do the right things over and over and over. And I think by doing that creates routine and by doing that creates discipline to want to do it. Good for you though. At 24, uh, I, I do say this, and that's a 
good question bold statement you know you trying to do this and you'll find uh i think it's just you just being repetitive uh and especially repetitive and i know it's an echo but uh, just repetitive on on the days you don't want to yeah uh, it sets you up that's the biggest thing that's so the biggest thing good job man good job yeah all right, so Mary's back. She says, it's when my toes cramp and go opposite directions. Same with fingers, thumbs, hamstrings, ball up real tight. Yeah, I used to have that all the time, having my toes. Um, you know what will cure it, honestly, and I know you're taking it already, potassium. You don't want your potassium to go too high. We start messing with electrolytes and stuff like that, guys, it can start getting dangerous. So just be weary of that. But, man, I would go back to eating a banana. Try to incorporate a banana instead of taking a supplementation of it. It worked like for what I was doing. And at that point, it might work for you too. I don't know. I mean, that's that's the only thing I could possibly offer up. I mean, to this than anything else. I mean, because usually that's what it is with cramping like that. Mary, will you let me know if this happens or frequently happens after a high day? Let me know if Ooh. that is something too. Let me know if it's, it's sugar? You're, you're pretty pretty on point during the week and then maybe you have a high day and then that leads to some cramping. Let me know if that is something. That could be it. I have both ACL replaced. Well, what to build stronger legs but knee swell? Any ideas to work them other than squats? As far as exercises, I, that's not my department. What can we do to get your legs stronger? We can do a couple things like Hercules Potion. We can inter- incorporate some GHRH peptides in there, IGF-1 possibly, you know, because that could take away some of the, the inflammation maybe in the areas. BPC-157, TB-500, even with a replacement in those areas, maybe beforehand or after, even if you're feeling the, the pain afterwards because the swelling and everything like that. Yeah, it's the, you got them replaced though, right? Is from what I understand here. Yeah. So what you get, Jeff? They're replaced, and so he's healing, or 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 it's been months and months, and uh, yeah, um, yeah. Look into the peptides that Johnny's talking about: BPC, uh, TB five hundred. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would do. But as for exercises. Uh, I would still keep squats in there, even though they're air squats or something. No, no weight on there, but just keep the range of motion and make sure the hips and everything in your and your knees are. Um, and you're not squatting with your knees in a sense. You, you know how you, you don't be doing front squats. Don't be doing bodybuilding squats. Make sure you're doing a good wide stance power squat, where there's very little movement to the knee. It's the body, the body's rotating. You're not just going straight down and up. So that's what I would also focus on too. And that's for everybody. If you guys want to see uh, squats, you can go over to my YouTube and stuff there. But uh, look into the peptides. The number is there. And I would do that regardless of this, you having the swelling or not. Um, you have an issue with your knees. I would, I would do that regardless of, of your leg development and stuff, guys. For most everybody on here, even if you don't have... I would still do that just because you want to prevent, prevent, prevent. Don't wait till you're injured. Uh, here's a here's a case where you make a statement and you make a statement, you give a, a brief answer, and then you get a response like this. Oh, not. Go back to it. Let's this see. What one, are we? This one. So front squats are, are worse than the knees. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's the... Uh, like Heath Evans says, you can't coach stupid. Sorry, guys. I was explaining to somebody that was doing something that wants to try to stop doing it. Uh, is it? Yeah. There's no reason for me to explain this. Yeah, I know. I just thought it was a good example. Don't take a term out of what I'm giving that guy for everybody in the world. Sorry. It doesn't work that way. But great point on your part. It's- uh, there was another one earlier about a guy who said he's not making any progress and he hasn't done his blood work ever and he wants some advice. Um, there it was. I've been working for years and I've been taking in more calories than I burned. I never got any blood tests, but I haven't really been seeing progress, maybe a pound every couple months. Well, 
Have you got a blood test? We need to get a blood test. That's that's the first thing. Got to see what's going on with hormone. I mean, we have no idea what's going on. And then at that point, like, I mean, what are we doing here? We really got to look at everything else too as well. I think it's a, it's a whole picture we need to take in with all the details. Why would you wait so long? You're putting in an effort. Why would you wait so long? I'm just curious on the mindset on that. If you could answer us back real quick or something, it, it just, I don't understand. Anybody out there, if, if you don't in a month, a month, see progress in the direction that you want to go, you want to get stronger, bigger, more size. If you don't see progress in one month, you're not doing it. You got to change. If you don't see weight dropping in, in a month, right? why wait? Why you're, you're kicking here. But it's going to this stuff. Why would you wait so long? Um, and especially if you've upped your calories and there's no change, that's really telling you, you know, step outside of yourself. Yeah, for sure. Are there some common markers that you've seen on people's blood work where they come in like this guy where they're like, hey, I'm not making any progress. I'm kind of at a stop right now. Are there some go-tos that, you, that you're looking for? 100%. Like, the, listen, especially the older guys, you know, usually it's testosterone. It, that's like one of the biggest markers that I see. And listen, it, it's not to say that you can't do your daily routine having low or unoptimized testosterone. I see a lot of guys that do it. I got a guy that works for me who's probably like at 400 or so. He's not tired. He still works out. He, he, he feels okay. Like he doesn't want to do it. But you know, he comes to me today and he's like, you know, I want to put on some more muscle. I'm like, well, we got to create the optimal environment for the body to be able to do this. And, you know, he's in his fifties. And at that point, like, you know, the older you get, it, it's not to say that you can't do it, but it's a little bit harder to do than when you're 30 or 20 years old, right? Our body is just growing, growing, growing at that point. Now it's kind of Hey, listen, we're here and we're not, we're not going back this way. So at that point, you're going to have to put in a little bit more effort and at, you got to make sure the environment is there to grow. The other market that I would look at would be IGF-1. I would definitely look at IGF-1 and look at free and total testosterone and make sure those are good. Other than that, you think the people don't really realize, good, do, they, they do, do people think, real? so we talked earlier about age and how these people are setting up a standard that, that I wish more people would do and like Demi Moore and Angela Bassett are showing you, you can not just look halfway, but you can look ridiculous into your right. mid sixties. Um, right. um, so my question though, is do people think that your body, cause I said, if it's been a month, why aren't you making something happen? Why aren't you changing? Why aren't you asking yourself yeah. questions that there's others? That, do you think that society thinks that you don't change in a month? You don't change in three months? You could stay on the same diet for six months and see very little change? Is that a common sense thing from the people that you meet and talk to? I mean, I guess. I mean, they think that, but I don't know. I mean, you should be making some sort of change. It should be going some sort of direction forward. Some things should be changing, whether it's weight loss or you're gaining a little bit more. I mean, if you're doing the right things in the body, one way or another, right? right? You should be making some sort of change. Some and the sort reason of change. it wouldn't be, the reason it wouldn't be is reason, because the body's not working with them. The the body's not, yeah, it's not it's not working like it should. So it's it's going on half ass per se. Right? It's, it's whittling down the road. You got two tires that are flat, and you got two tires that are running. You're kind of just moving. You're still moving. It's not moving as fast because your two front tires are flat. So at that point, like, you know, you can still move and go forward, but you're not going to get to where you want to go as fast as you want to go uh, and as easy as you want to as, as well. I mean, that's the biggest thing that I see with a lot of guys. I'm just like, I try to explain it to them. And a lot of the guys will see the big change. That's the difference is when it come to us and we it's it's a very common response. Listen, I'm doing the right things. I'm eating. I'm so clean. I train five times a week. You know, I have all this. Like Everything is perfect. And then we, I'm like, all right, listen, let's look at the blood work. And we start looking at the blood work, and these are the common things that we see. And yeah, then when we turn around and their levels actually get optimized and they're dialed in, those they thrive. 
it, yeah. it's just a total yeah. turnaround for most people in that situation. You know, I wish I wish more starts coming back. That. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. I just wish it would because if you're out there and you're not and scared to get the blood work, don't be. You're just getting blood work to tell you what you're doing, and it's like, right. I don't care if you're 20 or 30 or 40 or. 70 get your blood work done just find out what's what's going on because i was talking about some of these 30 year olds earlier and when and the one kid changed so much and he's mid early 30s but the only thing that was off was his free testosterone he had he's young he has great t but his free testosterone is not great titan medical works with him for four weeks and his body just is like burning you went from like a pinto to a ferrari it's 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 crazy, and he's a thirty-year-old. Yeah, and, and again, eats healthy, trains hard, does all these things. No stress. He's a very stress-free kind of an individual. When you meet those kind of people, your stress doesn't get to him. And it's like so everything's great. His body wasn't changing as he thought, and I felt it wasn't. And that's why I said, go get your blood work. I'm not talking to you anymore until you get your blood work done. And it comes back, and I go. Here it is. We could have pounded our heads against the wall for the next five years. You would have lost. You would have lost that 30 year old body. Yep. What I mean by that is how your body functions in your 30s. Sure. Because of your ego. I don't need that. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Great. Yep. Great job. Who are you hurting? Who are you hurting by not getting the blood work? Right. And it's just one it thing. Hurt you. Off. you know, it's like one thing that was off. And now he's like, whew crazy i just i just wish you guys out there uh get your blood work done do those things mary tell me if that cramping is because of your and that's not a charlie horse you knucklehead it's a cramp uh <laughs> tell me if it's happening after your high day i agree with john potassium uh, incorporate let's incorporate that into your meal plan so you get a little bit more man i love the crowd today you guys uh, fully loaded here yeah um, this is awesome johnny always brings it always does his great stuff Phone number is right there. You do, man. You do. Man, Johnny, thank you for hanging again. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it, man, as always. It's been a great Tuesday. Yeah, and, and Johnny's going to keep going. So if you guys got questions, um, jump on over to uh, Titan Medical page. And uh, Johnny be going live again doing some Q&As. Am I correct on that? One, yep, I definitely will. So one more thing. So the therapy of the week, there's a special that's going on. Oh, nice call. GLP-1 special, semi-glutide or tears appetite, either one. Level one, $50 off the package. Level two, $100 off either package. So at that point, if you want more information about it, call or text us at the number below, 727-389-3220. And our medical staff would be happy to go over all that. There's no blood work that's needed. But I always say, hey, listen, better to check and know than not know. So you can get that too if you want. But at that point, the GLP-1 specials combat the over excessive holiday eating because it's coming very soon with Thanksgiving and Christmas. Is there going to be a uh, Black Friday blood work special or anything like that that they can look for? So, yeah. So Black Wednesday is for Titan. It's always been a Black Wednesday event for us. We're going to give out at least free six blood free yeah, six free blood tests say that five times three for back. males three for females and then at that point we're going to be giving away free merch throughout the day and free gift certificates of a hundred dollars and free therapy so i would definitely want to tune in or stay locked to tight medical center's social media next wednesday all right guys get on over there uh watch for johnny going live ask more questions oh, yeah. about uh everything titan medical has to help you guys achieve yes the ultimate superhero body. And also remember, Gladiators comes out this Friday. Woo! Can't wait. I know, I know you're going Thursday night, probably. You know it. I'm going <laughs> for sure. I can't wait to see that movie. All right, guys. We'll talk soon. Johnny, thank you, brother. Later, Mike. I'll talk to you guys later.